Welcome to another Women Lead TV segment brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. I'm Michelle Berkwist, your host, and Mary doesn't know this yet, of Badass Business Women. <laughs> that is our show series, and we are going to explore how women are badass and what they do in business. So with that, I'm delighted to introduce our badass businesswoman today, Mary Van Dorn, who is on her own in the mortgage industry, has been in the industry a long time, and I'm going to ask you the first question. How do you define the fact that you're badass in business? Because you are. You uh, so okay. are. Well, I think, like you said, I've been in this industry for a very long time. A long time. And, and you do not look it. So and we'll go a it. lot of people don't stay in the industry. Yeah. I think maybe because a lot of people come into it, they hear that you can make good money in it. And so they come in for the fast money and, mm -hmm. and the quick, quick cut. Um, and I think that leaves a lot of opportunity for people like myself. You know, that are in it. it. We're in it. I, I place a lot of integrity in my business. Mm -hmm. And I think that for that, you reap a lot of the long-term benefits of really connecting with people and building long-term relationships. And that's what I love about being in the business, is the, the relationships that I get to build. If I start with somebody and I, I do their loan, and now I'm doing their kids' loan, and now their grandkids' oh, loans, and that is follows. so fulfilling to me. You know, yeah. to know that I've given that kind of service. And if you give that kind of wow service so that everybody feels like they're the most important client you have, yeah. that leads to long-term relationships and benefits. That's so cool. And, and then even though the industry can have its ebbs and flows, and I've been through I don't know how many ups and downs. It doesn't even matter. But um, We're going to pick yeah. them apart a little bit, but yeah, okay. those, those but, transitions. But as you go through those, you just kind of go with the flow, mm -hmm. and you know they're coming and they're going. And if you've got the relationships already built up, they're going to stick by you. I love it. Well, back up. I'm going to back up. I have 20,000 questions in mm -hmm. good ways. It's like, I know you have kind of a unique... You started in the business, but you're not just a mortgage lender. So you have a really great story of how your family was in real estate, right? And you have this combination of real estate and mortgage lending, if I understood your, your background right, a little right. bit. Um, so when I was growing up in my teen years, my parents were both in real estate, and they were top producers in the area. And when I was in high school, I used to help out in their office and just doing stuff around the office. But I, I really didn't enjoy it so much. Um, then when I started to go to college, I told my mom one day, I'm, I'm going to go out and look for a job. So I went to personnel agencies and what have you. Oh, and they I, were called personnel back then, right? right. Now they're and I, resources. Exactly. <laughs> and I came home at the end of the day, and I was so distraught. I said, nobody wants me. Like, I have no experience. Oh. And so she says, well, Jean came by. Remember Jean from this mortgage company? And I said, yeah. She said, well, I told him you were out looking for a job. And he said that they'll take you as a receptionist. Woo. I thought, wow, I must have really impressed him as a receptionist. <laughs> I didn't know it at the time, but because my parents were top producers, it would serve him well to right. give their daughter a job. It's all who you right? know, Mary. It's so who you know. I didn't know that at the time, but anyway, I was happy. I love that. Um, but then I went from being the receptionist, I went into loan processing and funding, and then into underwriting and operations management, and I really liked that hands-on, I am the ultimate numbers nerd. I love working with numbers. And paper? And paper. And, paper. and I, like I lay things out and I strategize with them. And to me, sometimes a complicated file is like people do crossword puzzles or a Sudoku. Oh. I can't stand those, but give me my numbers and, right. and I'm really happy there. I love, well, because not every yeah. deal is an easy deal, right? Because I came from banking, but it's almost like a mm -hmm. puzzle piece that sometimes you have to put together yeah. of how to make it work. You do geek out on that, by the way. I do. Your eyes I lit do. up when you talked about that. I do. So, like, so, so I had that background, but I really like meeting new people. Mm -hmm. So when my daughter was born, I knew I didn't want to go back to work full time in an office. It's like, right. I, want, I want to take care of this little girl of mine. So I started to do contract processing and underwriting from my home. And I did that probably for about a year and a half. At the time, I was also teaching nights. So I could work from home all day and then teach two nights a week. And I was teaching mortgage banking classes. Oh, wow. And then I started to look at, as I'm setting up these files for closing, I'm looking at all the money that the loan officers are making, and I'm getting four or $500 a file. And I'm thinking, this, I'm, mm. I'm the one figuring oh, this yeah. out. They give me this, like, half-ass loan application, and I have to put it together and make it happen. So oh, love it. I love it. I already had my real estate license because my parents were in real estate and they thought all their kids had their license. I have. That was smart, by the way. That's very smart. That's I have nine smart. brothers and sisters. I think at one point, seven of us had a real estate license. We may not have been using it. And I think there's four 
real estate brokers in the family. Oh my God! And again, not everybody's using business. it. it yeah. At one time, we had somebody in escrow, worked at the board office, worked in title, and I was in lending. So, I mean, oh I had it going pretty good. But then my daughter, so then I started my own mortgage brokerage. Mm -hmm. And then uh, that was great because as my kids got older. Did I you intend, though? I mean, did you just say, I'm gonna, I want to do my own business? Yeah, because I saw how much money they were making. Okay, okay. And one of the services that I also provided was helping individuals that wanted to start their own mortgage brokerage. So I was setting them up with all the connections, the wholesale lenders they needed, the re mm -hmm. credit report services. I was setting all that up for them. And then I just thought, what am I doing it for them for? That's right. <laughs> this is like crazy. These are all good, but I have a question because I think for our listeners who are professional women, you know, so many people, you know, like you said, hop in and out of different industries. And yet you have had this incredible staying power of, I'm just going to go through it. The early 90s, we're in mm -hmm. California, so that recession, 2008, who doesn't remember the meltdown of 2008? So I'm curious for you. Like, have, do you prepare for it? Were you just frugal about how you knew it was coming, the bubble up and downs? How did? How have you had such sustaining power over two really, really, and there's been other ones yeah. within that, but I, those are the big ones that I recognize. I am very frugal. Okay. I mean, I do plan ahead for for the, the quiet times. Mm -hmm. You know, when Knowing they'll gonna, come. They are going to okay. come. They always come. Right. So preparing for that. Is, is crucial. Mm -hmm. And then when the times are great, enjoy them, you know, treat yourself somewhat, but just kind of pace yourself, keep right. it at a pace, you know. Um, I would say too, just because I enjoy what I'm doing, and there have been times where when the market slows down and you think, do I still want to do this? Like, mm -hmm. what else do I want to do? And I honestly can't think of anything else I'd rather do. Wow. So I, that is just you comes love back it. To you that. just love I it. I just that much. love what I do. Well, and what would be maybe your two cents for some w professional women that are saying, "I don't know what to do." Maybe they're single moms. Maybe that's like they've got young children. I mean, it's a great independent type of business opportunity. But I'm curious what advice you would give women who are thinking of maybe getting into the mortgage industry. Getting into the mortgage industry it can be very lucrative. Mm -hmm. um, it takes some education, some classes and whatnot that you have to take. Get yourself a really good mentor. Get to know the programs really well. If you know the guidelines, you can help people a lot better and you're not going back and forth, mm -hmm. right? So, so get to know that. Um, for me, it has given me the opportunity to be available when my kids were growing up. I could make all the baseball games, the hockey games, my daughter's practice, skating right. practice. I could do all that because I kind of have... I have full freedom with my calendar, but it's also like you're on call 24 hours a day, right? So you have to be available. You right, have to be available, right. but at the same time, you have the freedom to do it, mm -hmm. you know? So even if it's not mortgage banking and you're trying to figure out what do you want to do, I would say it's really important to, well, if you wake up in the morning and you go, oh, God, I don't want to go to work today. Okay, you have to think why. There's a lot of people out there that say yeah. that. <laughs> why? Well, because Monday I mornings. hate my job. What do you want to do? What would make you happy? And when you start thinking of really what would make me happy, then mm -hmm. you're going to find out what it is you want to do. And, and you say, well, I think I'd like to do this. And you have to ask yourself, well, why? Mm -hmm. Well, because it would give me freedom. Or it would, I, I, I like working with animals or, or children or whatever right. it is. But when you keep asking that why, you're going to come up with something to do. I think that's fair advice. I mean, again, yeah. we're not, you know, I and, think everybody and, finds their why in a different way, right? Yours has been mm -hmm. in this industry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say, the other thing is then if you think you know what you want to do, a lot of us come to the point of saying, oh, I don't know how to get there. What do I do? I don't know mm -hmm. who to, what to do. I think if you start, stop and just say to yourself, who do I know that can help me with this? Mm -hmm. Who do I know that knows somebody that does this? And maybe you can shadow them. Or, or get that as a mentor, but I think that's an important question. Once you think you have an idea of where you want to go, what you want to do, then start asking who. And already as you're saying that, I'm going to all of us as women. So many of us as women will be like, I'll have to figure it all out myself. And it's like we need to be asking for support. We need mm -hmm. to go and say, hey, who do you know who? All of that. So if you're out there and you're thinking, oh, my gosh, not me, and i got to figure it all out, go and start just asking questions, right? I mean, right. one of the best classes I ever took in college was called informational interviewing. It got me literally um, kind of crazy from Nebraska <laughs> to San Diego. And I was like, I was happy about that. Best class I ever took. University of Nebraska, go Cornhuskers, I have to say that. Um, I want to shift a little bit and, and have you talk about just not the staying power, but the learning lessons that you've had in business. Because I know you have gone where you've been independent, you know, aligned with an organization, you've been independent on your own, you've been your own business. 
What have made those shifts happen for you? And what did you kind of learn from those those times of shift and pivot? I think we all have that, but for you, right. where have been the lessons? Right, so even when I had my own mortgage brokerage, I wasn't working for an institution, but I had a lot of wholesale lenders that I would work with. Mm -hmm. And so what made me work with one more than another, obviously, is going to be pricing and service, right? Right. So if you could consider that being working under an umbrella or what have you. Um, and then a couple of years back when I thought I was going to work for a company that didn't work out so well for me, it didn't work out because I didn't belong there. And because you weren't supposed to be working for them, you're supposed to be on your own. That's right. why, right? And, yes. <laughs> so I would say if you're not happy, bounce. Mm. Just Good bounce. word. You know, because they say we're supposed to hire slow and fire fast. Same thing, when you go for a job, hire slow, like Interesting. do your research, make sure it's something you want to do. And if you get in there and find out this isn't what I thought it was going to be, mm -hmm. get out. Don't be miserable. I like that because so many of us, when we're looking and interviewing, we think, oh gosh, we have to impress them. Mm -hmm. And yet I think what's what's fascinating, the ones where for me when I was in my career, it was like I'm, I'm, I'm asking them questions, which I looked as if I was super interested, which I was, right. but I was asking them about their culture. And it's like, you know, what, what do they really think are important for their employees and their team members and where's the company going and, and all of that. Because if you aren't showing interest and really right. vetting them as much as they're vetting you, that's great advice. I like that. What, you know, when you see the future for mortgage lending, you know, because we have that pendulum that swung from 2008, and I just, I love trending things, right? We, we, we know the pendulum swings one way, which was after 2008, and then it goes back the other way, and I think things, are they loosening up again now? And we're in 2019. For I just have to make sure mm -hmm. we have that on there, because we're not in 2008 or close to it, but is it a right. little bit easier now to get loans again, and it not is, like it was pre-2008, of course? Right, it is a lot easier. Um, there's a lot more products available. A lot more. Okay. Interest rates are fabulous right now. Um, I don't think we'll ever see the pendulum go as far as it did. I don't think we ever saw loans get as easy as they did before. It was crazy. It, it was ridiculous. Like and, stated and, income, you just make up a magic number. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, exactly. I'm a lender, so I was in right, banking, but right. yeah, that was and, crazy. And with that, they were giving you 125% financing. Yeah. That was just a recipe. Wait, let's just for put that in huge. perspective. You actually owe more than what your property's worth, and that's like as not you move into it, exactly. And you're, you're you didn't even have to, to make fail. any income to qualify. Right. You just said what you made. So I love it. yeah, it was it was really bad. So we're almost out of time. I'm going to turn the tables and say to you, like, one final question to show us how you're badass. You ready for mm. it? It's like, look at the future, <laughs> and what is the future for Mary Van Doren in the next, like, three to five years? Like, where are you trying to go and inspire that, that viewing audience for us? I know you can. Wow. <laughs> it's not like a small That's question, a, right? No, it's not. It's, it's like, a hmm. big question. So three to five years from now, where do I see myself? Yeah. Um, I want to grow my team. Yay. So I have more junior loan officers under me. Um, the reason I want to do that is because I want more free time for myself. Yeah. I want to travel more, and um, so I want to build up those relationships. I love the relationships I have with my referral partners, mm -hmm. and I want to deepen those and then broaden them. So, with, mm -hmm. And I can do that with a bigger team. And I, the team now I, that I have now is amazing. It Very is cool. amazing. I'm so proud of them. And they make my life a lot easier right now. So I'm just looking to multiply on that and spend more time, especially traveling and more time with my kids that are kind of on all parts of the country. Um, so I threatened Super to put cool. a, a she shed in each of their yards. <laughs> and let's describe what a she shed is, because we all want one as women. But well, what's a she shed? Well, like they have the man caves, right? <laughs> So the they, you, a private place where you yes, can go? Yes, and, and I'm going to put it in their backyard. So it's it's like a very large shed, but it usually has a kitchenette and a bathroom and a large living area. You know, it's also called a granny flat. No, it's not. We, okay, we're not going to call it that. Okay, so we are done with this Women Lead <laughs> TV segment. Thank you for being our leading lady today, Mary. You are badass, and thank you for your time. We'll have you back. Thank you. Um, I'm Michelle Berquist. Again, this is Badass Business Women with Women Lead TV brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. We'll see you on the next show.